common my Freunde to what seems like only yesterday, but it isn't because it's the week ending 15th of December 1985. In at number 10 this week is Midjur, the main man from Ultravox and the other guy in Band-Aid with If I Was, which was up this week from number 12. It's that kind of 80s song, not eternally memorable, yet when you hear it, it's evocative of a sound and a time and a style that immediately reminds you of or invokes something. You just can't be sure what. Lionel Richie makes another appearance with Say You Say Me, a pleasant enough song, if not an especially memorable one. Do you see a pattern developing yet? It peaked out at number three early in the new year, but the hit-making juggernaut of Lionel Richie still had a few miles left in it after this one. The utterly unmemorable Hooters move up a place this week to number eight with And We Danced. Most famous for opening the US segment of Live Aid, the band were and remain much bigger in Europe than in the US or Australia where they remain forever a slightly bewildering, as in, we listen to this, piece of generational flotsam. Two of the once great hopes of the post-punk world meet at number seven, clearly disillusioned with the failure of New Wave to change the world, and instead aiming for the bland and inoffensive pabulum of the newly emerging corporate rock, they being UB40, who I once saw open to The Clash, and Chrissy Hind with their cover of I Got You Babe. A number one in mid-November, it would see out the year still in the top 10 before a vertiginous fall into a very occasionally heard jam on the old East Station. Number six is the beloved Australian hitmaker Jimmy Barnes, formerly of one of our most high reputation bands, Cold Chisel. In the last 37 years, Barnes has only ever released one album that didn't make the top three. And that one was 1999's Love and Fear, which was possibly the best of all of them. Here, he applies his shouty style to the title track of his second album, Working Class Man, in a song barely removed from its Americana roots. Nonetheless, the real glory here is Barnes's voice, all sledgehammer and no scalpel, and raw and unabashed in its Aussiness. Here's a fact, Aussiness isn't a word. Here are some more facts from the fantastic world of facts. The biggest rise of this week was We Built This City by Starship, up 19 places to number 23. This being a national charter compiled all the results from each market. In my hometown, and I don't know what this says about my hometown, the song was already at number two. The fastest faller was by the astonishingly lovely and gifted Kate Bush, whose running up that hill went running down the hill from 29 to 40, having peaked at number six. The emeritus record on this week's chart was, at 15 weeks, the late Phyllis Nelson's wonderful Move Closer, a UK number one, and having made it as high as number 15 on the local charts and the longest running album on the charts was Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA, which celebrated 18 months on the charts this week, which just goes to show not only will some people buy anything, but they will buy it over an awfully long period of time. Number one in the USA this week was Broken Wings by two hit wonders Mr. Mister, and in the land of tea and crumpets, Whitney Houston's enjoyable Saving All My Love For You was in the first of its two weeks on top. Number one album in the old hometown was perennial favourite Brothers in Arms, somewhere in the middle of its 36 week run on top. Bopping funksters of Pseudo Echo on one of their nine top 40 hits, Don't Go, which tapped out at number four. After breaking up in 1990, main man Brian Cannon 
reformed the group in 2014 and since then they've been a staple at festivals, bringing the party in no uncertain terms every time. At number four, we have almost unbelievably the first appearance of Elton John in our little series. Elton has had 41 top 40 hits around these parts, but only two since 1997. And of them, Nikita is far from the worst, but also far from the best. Elton's catalogue was a bit of a mess at this time. Nondescript singles off interchangeable albums that completely lack the depth of his best 70s albums. There's an argument that Blue Moves is the last truly great Elton John album, but I'd argue the classic run ends with Captain Fantastic, which was the last album the classic Elton John band played on until 1983. That said, Nikita, which made number three and featured a video directed by an obviously slumming Ken Russell, is an interesting song, inasmuch as Nikita is a masculine name in Russia. I knew that marriage to a woman was a sham. Number three is an iconic song of the decade, Take On Me by Aha, from their excellent album Hunting High and Low. A song and sound so of its time, an, inc an incredibly innovative and influential video, and music from Norway without growly vocals, the band never quite realised its potential outside Europe despite contributing the excellent theme song to the Bond film The Living Daylights. They still play and tour occasionally, and Hunting High and Low is a memorable artefact of their days of pomp. In it too, we have what was the first record ever to have debuted at number one on the local charts. The Species to Ceces EP from my favourite band and inveterate copyright claimers, Midnight Oil. Harnessing the raw pub rock power of the band at its very best, there's little in the way of melody, less in the way of subtlety, and absolutely nothing in the way of lyrical common sense, but it all comes together in a sweaty, pounding, slam dancing hole. An outlier on the charts this week for sure, but not an unrefreshing one. Which brings us to number one, or more correctly, it brings Monty the Safety Monkey and his inimitable introduction to number one. Rocket Monty! Jennifer Rush's The Power of Love is one of the least memorable number ones we've encountered so far in this series. Reclaiming top spot this week for Midnight Oil, only to lose it to them again next week and then reclaim it in the new year, this was a big, gaudy, splashy power ballad, the type which was to dominate the charts the next year. Curiously, Huey Lewis and the News also had a former number one called The Power of Love on the charts this week, and Frankie Goes to Hollywood also had a song called The Power of Love hovering around the lower regions. In what again suggests a pattern, Rush was a big star in Europe, but this was her one shot on the charts over here. The end of 1985 was a turning point for me in the radio. I moved away from Top 40 AM and started listening to alternative radio as rock music began to fade and become more generic, pallid and corporate, and pop and dance music, often by disposable lycra-clad entertainment units, began to dominate. But of that one shining moment at the end of 1985, we had a diverse, vibrant Top 10, and thanks to the foreign country they call the past, we always, in one way or the other, We'll have it. 